Good day students, welcome to mathgoodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem 6 to 10, part 2 of the January 2015 Integrated Algebra Regents exam. Alright, so for number 6, it says the graph of f of x is shown below. So this is a graph of f of x. Based on this graph, what are the roots of the equation f of x equals 0? Okay, so we have the graph here. The expectation is for us to use um, the graph to find the roots um, of this function. Okay, all right, so first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and label the axis. Um, this is our x and y axis. Let's calibrate it. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is negative 1. All right, so what are the roots of an equation, of a function? The roots are basically the x-intercepts, okay? Let's go ahead and write that down. Um, the roots, <coughs> roots are the x-intercepts. What do we know about the x-intercepts? We have an x-intercept anywhere y is equal to 0. So f of x is equal to y. So when f of x is equal to 0, we have y equals 0. And whatever x value that satisfies this equation are the roots and also the x-intercepts, OK? So in this graph, what we're basically looking for are the x values where the graph intercepts the x-axis. We have two of them here. This is the first one, and this is the second one. So the roots of our equation, the roots, are x equals negative 1 and x equals 5. All right? Answer for number 6 is option number 2. All right, let's take a look at problem number seven. It says, Jose wants to ride his bike a total of 50 miles this weekend. If he rides 10 miles on Saturday, which expression represents the number of miles he must ride on Sunday? So in this problem, we're basically um, converting um, a statement into a mathemat mathematical equation and then using that to solve for um, a specified component of that equation. So uh, total miles to be ridden in the weekend is 50. So let's go ahead and write that down. Total miles uh, equals 50. Now, um, the weekend is made up of Saturday and Sunday, right? So if we want to um, rewrite this equation using the days um, of the weekend, we can write this as um, Saturday miles plus Sunday miles. That's the total miles of the weekend equals 50, all right? Now, we are provided with another information here. Um, we're told that Jose wrote, uh, writes m miles on Saturday. So since m miles is equal to the number of miles written on Saturday, we can represent Saturday miles with m. So m plus Sunday miles, total number of miles he writes on Sunday equals 50. OK? Now, the question asks, which expression represents the number of miles he must ride on Sunday? So Sunday miles should be isolated in this equation. In order to accomplish that, we'll simply subtract m from both sides of our equation. And then we'll have Sunday miles equals 50 minus m. And uh, M, uh, 50 minus M is our answer, option number three. All right, let's take a look at problem number eight. It says four students are playing a math game at home. 
one of the math game question asks them to write an algebraic equation. So we have what Brandon, William, Alice, and Kayla wrote. And the question is, which student wrote an algebraic equation? So what is an algebraic equation? Is a mathematical statement that has an equal sign. Okay, so equation basically means um, equal sign. So equations have equal signs. Okay, equal equal sign. All right. So what we're basically looking for here is which of these statements have has an equal sign next to it. Option number. The first option by Brandon, this is an expression, okay? And then what William has is an inequality. And then what Elise wrote, this is an expression again. It does not have any equal signs. And, oh, take a look at what Kayla wrote. It has an equal sign right there. So this is an equation, okay? It's an algebraic equation because we have a variable component um, associated with it. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number four. All right, let's take a look at problem nine. It says, a student spent 15 minutes painting a two foot by three foot bulletin board to the nearest tenth of a minute, how long did it take the students to paint one square foot? So in this problem, we are going to be um, using rates to compare how, to see how fast um, the student spends painting, okay? So if the student paints two foot by three foot um, bulletin board in 15 minutes, what is the square footage that the student paints in 15 minutes? So if you have a two foot by three foot, um, the square footage would simply be um, the area. All right, so let's sketch this so in 15 minutes. The student paints, uh, let's go ahead and make a sketch of the situation. So we can just go down one, two, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. All right, so the student paints a two by three, a two foot by three foot bulletin board. So what's the area here? The area is length times width, which is two times three, which is six square foot, okay? That's the um, <clears throat> total area that the student um, paints in 15 minutes, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use rates uh, to set up an equation to solve for how long it's going to take the student um, to paint one square foot, okay? So let's declare our variable. So let x um, equal the number of minutes to paint one square foot. Okay, so now in the setup of our, of our equation, we're going to make um, set up two ratios, basically setting up a proportion. In the numerator, I like to start with what I'm looking for, which is x minutes. So we're going to be setting up an uh, setting up two ratios using the following system. The numerator will be the time, of course, in minutes, and then in the denominator, we'll have the area in square footage, okay? All right, so this is the setup right here. Let's start with what we're looking for, x minutes. In x minutes, the, st the student could uh, paint one square foot. That's what we're looking for. How long did it take to paint one square foot? So for every x minutes, you paint one square foot equals now, what's the ratio that we know? We know that in 15 minutes, how many square foot was um, the student able to paint? Six, okay? So if you take a look at this setup that we have here, 
in the numerator, we have the time in minutes, and in the denominator, we have the square footage. Now we have a nice algebraic equation that we can solve for x, the number of um, square foot, uh, the, the number of minutes the student could paint, um, the number of minutes it takes a student to paint one square foot. Okay, so now how do we solve this? We can simply multiply both sides by one, but that's not really necessary since uh, if you divide by one, you'll be left with what you started with. So we're going to have x equals 15 over 6. Now let's go ahead and reduce this. Um, we can divide the numerator and the denominator by the, the GCF, which is 3. And that yields 5 over 2. Write that as a mixed number. That's 2 and a half. And as a decimal, 2.5 minutes. Okay? So we can clearly see that the answer here is option number three. It takes this, it will take the students 2.5 minutes to paint one square foot. All right, let's take a look at problem number 10. It says, what is it, an equation of the line that passes through the points 2, 1, and 6, negative 5? So uh, if you're given two points and you want to write the equation of a line, you need the slope and a point, okay? So that's the minimum amount of information you need to write uh, down the equation of a line. You need a slope and a point. So when you're given two points, um, you can use the point-slope form or the slope-intercept form. The quickest method to uh, find the equation of the line is to use the point slope form of the equation of a line. So it's y minus y1 <coughs> equals m x minus x1. Okay, so the things we need to be able to set up the equation are our points x1, y1, and the slope m. The beauty about this problem is we already have a point. We can call this x1, y1, or call this x, x1, y1. But for the sake of order, let's call the first point x1, y1. So we have 2, 1. Let's call this x1, y1. And then we have another point, 6, negative 5. Let's call this x2, y2. So we already have... Um, x1 and y1, in the point slope form of the equation of a line, we need to find m, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We need to find m. m is a slope. So how do we do that? In your reference sheet, the formula for um, the slope will be provided. m, slope is rise over run. Rise along the y's is y2 minus y1. Run along the x is x2 minus x1. So we have two points here. We will just simply substitute the values of x1, y1, and x2, y2 into this equation to find the slope, okay? So you have to be really careful with your substitution and the computation of your sums and differences when you're computing the slope, okay? This is a, one of the technical parts of this problem. So y2 is negative 5 minus y1, which is 1 divided by x2, which is 6, minus x1, which is 2. All right, let's go ahead and uh, compute this. Minus 5 minus 1 is negative 6 over 6 minus 4. 6 minus 2 is 4. <clears throat> if you divide the numerator and the denominator by the GCF, which is 2, that yields negative, um, divide the numerator by two, you have negative three over two, okay? So there goes your slope. All right, now that we have our, our slope, we are now ready to write the equation of the line, okay? So what we're going to do is plug in x1, y1, and m into this equation right here. So let's write it again. So x1 is two, y1 is one, and m is what? We just found it, the m or slope is negative 3 over 2, okay? 
So let's plug in all these values into this equation. <clears throat> y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So we substitute, we'll have y minus y1, which is 1, equals m, the slope, which is negative 3 over 2, times x minus x1, which is 2. Now, if you take a look at the options we have here, they are all written in slope-intercept form. All right, so that simply involves isolating y, and that will be a slope-intercept form. So first thing we have to do is let's address this parenthesis. We'll just distribute 3 over 2 to the, these two quantities here. You can write this as a fraction. When you're multiplying, you will multiply the numerator and the numerator and the denominator with the denominator. Okay, so we have y minus 1 equals negative 3 over 2x. Now, this is where you want to be really careful. Notice this is a minus and this is a minus. So when you multiply by a negative number, the sign of the number you're multiplying by always changes, okay? So minus times a minus becomes a plus. And then 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. So we're going to have um, <clears throat> y minus 1 equals negative 3 over 2x. 6 over 2 is 3. And then we'll simply add 1 to both sides of our equation. And that yields y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 4. Our final answer is option number 2. Okay? So that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, if you like this presentation, feel free to give us a thumbs up. If we have enough thumbs up, we'll be encouraged to make the next one. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series. If you have any questions about the Regents exam or questions about this video, just include it in the comment section below, and we'll be glad to um, answer it as soon as possible. More clips can be found um, on mathgotserve.com under test prep. Go ahead and visit that. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.